How many will feel okay what we talked about so far? Okay. I need to introduce to you one more concept today. Here's the concept. I want you to imagine my famous curve. I want you to imagine my famous curve. I want you to revolve it around the x-axis. we have this before, right? You've seen that. You get this sort of vase looking thing on its side. Now we've been able to find the length of the curve. We've been able to find the volume of this figure. What if I ask you not for the volume anymore, but I ask you for the surface area? Basically, how much wrapping paper exactly would it take to cover that figure? So not volume, not how much it would hold, how much surface area you would need to make it. How much surface it has. On the outside or the inside as well? The outside. Okay. The covering of the outside. Mm -hmm. The inside we're going to consider to be solid. Okay, so it's, it's a solid. But we're saying how much wrapping paper would it take if you were here to give us someone as a present because you didn't have to cover the top and the bottom? Well, tell me something. What's the cross section? No, that would be the area. What's the cross section? The cross section is a circle. The surface area of the cross section would be, of course, pi r squared. But I'm not asking for the area, am I? I'm asking for what does it have to do with going around something? The circumference. Can you find the circumference of a circle? What is it? So if I take a cross section and find the circumference, and I do that at every little point, and add up all those circumferences throughout the whole length, can you see that I'm going to get the surface area of this figure? So our idea here is here to take the circumference times the length and integrate it. Now we've already found the length. We just need to incorporate what the circumference is. It'll be very, very quick and easy next time. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. I'll give you maybe one or two examples and that will be it. Okay, so we're all alone. There's no class in here today, but I'm going to give you a pretty thorough explanation on how to find the surface area of revolution. The idea is, start with a function, just my, my famous function, and we're going to revolve that around the x-axis and try to find the surface area of the solid that we create. So basically, how much wrapping paper would you need to cover this entire figure on the outside? We're not going to include the ends, so we're going to leave those open, but basically how much wrapping paper around. The ends would be just a basic geometry problem. Area of a circle, area of a circle. So we're going we're gonna to not do that. But we are talking about the surface area of that figure. Now I want to, to kind of posit this, that the surface area is a combination of the circumference of a circle times its length. So when you think of surface area, it would be how far around do you have to go at each little place on this figure then add up all of those surface areas, an infinite number of them, and you're going to get the surface area of the whole entire figure. So the idea is surface area equals circumference times length. Well, if you think about it, what, what shape are we, are we making here? What's the cross-section of any of these cuttings? And, and when you think about it, you, you say, well, yeah, of course, it's a circle. What's the circumference of a circle? And we know that as 2 pi r. So we're going to get circumference times length, 2 pi r times whatever the length happens to be. Now, if you think back, you watch the previous videos, we know that we've already done length. We know that length is actually the square root of 1, f prime of x, and we'll have a dx of the well, squared, sorry, 
and we'll have a dx at the very end. 2 pi r, think about what the radius actually is. The radius is the distance from here to here at any given point. The distance from the x-axis to the function is the function. You plug in whatever the x is, it's going to give you the height. So the radius in our case is simply f of x. So we have 2 pi f of x. What that means is that for us to find, and then we're going to integrate, of course, at every single point. So for us to find the surface area, surface area is going to equal an integral from where we start to where we stop of 2 pi, that's coming from the circumference, f of x times 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. I hope that you can see where the formula is coming from. It is circumference, area around, or sorry, the distance around a circle, distance around a circle, times the length, how many little circles you have to add up, how many surface areas. So here we have circumference, we have length, we've already made this up. That's how we're going to find surface area. Now, I'm about to give you a much more in-depth explanation. So remember this formula. I'm going to give you the calculus behind it all. So here we go. As with anything involving our calculus, the idea is can you make little cuts and make those cuts go very, very, very small and then add them all together with a limit. I'm oh, sorry, add them all together with a sum and take the, the limit of that sum, saying I'm not going to add just a few of them, I'm going to add an infinite number of them. So basically we start off just like we started the area problem, just like we started the volume problem with disc and washers. Like anything else, we're going to make little cuts. And we can call them x sub 1, x sub 2, and so on and so on and so on. Now, each of those cuts, how we found the length of it, how we found the length of the curve, was that we took and we kind of truncated that curve. We cut it off. And we found the length of each of these straight lines. Because we know how to find the length of the line. What we didn't know how to find was the length of the curve. Now that we do, well, we can have that. Now, notice, when I take the length of the line, the length of the line, and I revolve it around the x-axis like this. When I revolve that around, what it's going to create are all these figures that have some surface area that, that's flat. We're going to have a flat surface area. Now, we use the length of this line to approximate the length of the curve. What we're going to do now is, is find the surface area of, it's called the frustrum. It's the, the surface area of the flat part to approximate the surface area of the curved part. So all these cuts make all these cuts over here. And so on and so on. But that's not exactly it. You see, since we truncated these, this line, we truncated that function at, at every single cutting, we're going to do the same thing here. And what we're going to end up with is, is this figure. That will be straight. 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 Same thing there. So we basically change a nice curve into a whole bunch of little pieces added together. All these frustrums added together. They're, they're flat-sided, almost like, uh, from, from the side, it would kind of look like a trapezoid almost. You'd have this, this perpendicular, perpendicular, and then these angles going up. Now we're going to take a look at one of these frustrum. So notice what I've done. I've just taken, I've taken one of these things, I've pulled it off to the side. Here's our goal. Our goal is to find the surface area of that piece, of this piece, and then add all of the little frustrums together, all the little pieces together. Well, let's think about that for, for just a second. <clears throat> First thing.
If that's our x-axis, where does our cut start and where does our cut stop? Now we have to be very general on this. I can't call it A, I can't call it x sub 1, x sub 2. I need to call it x sub k. And if I do that, what's the one right before x sub k? Well, it's the, just the previous one, so x sub k minus 1. So we now know where the frustum is going to start and where it's going to stop, where the surface area is going to start and where it's going to stop. <clears throat> now, in order to find the surface area, I have to just give it to you, but if you look it up in kind of an advanced geometry book, you're going to find out that this is true. If I find the surface area of a frustum that's just the outside region, if I find the surface area of the outside re region, that means this angled part that's coming out at you, what it is is pi r1 plus r2 times the length. That's the formula for surface area. Now, of course, I'm doing this for each and every one of these little frustrums, each and every one of these pieces. So I'm going to say, not just surface area in general, surface area for the kth one. Pi is a constant, that doesn't change, but the radius for the kth one, the other radius for the kth one, and the length at the kth frustrum. <clears throat> now let's talk and, and try to figure out if we can figure out what r sub 1 k is and what r sub 2 k is. L sub k, we're going to, we already have that one, but we're going to worry about these two things. So if I call this r1 and I call this r2, can you tell me can you tell me how much R1 is? I know you can't because you're on the video. But let's just, just think about it for a second. If I'm trying to find R1, think about what we're doing. We're taking and we're cutting from here to here on the function. Notice it's a secant line. So the height at this point is the function height. The height at this point is also the function height. So R1 is actually the function's height at whatever this point is. I'll, I'll repeat that. The distance from here to here is R1. The distance from here to here is whatever the function height is at my x-coordinate. In this case, my x-coordinate is x sub k minus 1. What that means. is that my radius is actually f of x sub k minus 1. You plug in x sub k minus 1 into f, you get the height at that point, that's your radius. How about the height here, from here to here? Well, well, look, that's just the height of the function. It's the height of the function of whatever x coordinate I'm plugging in. In this case, it's x sub k. So R2 is f of x sub k. Oh, now how about L? What we call L is the diagonal distance of our frustrum, how far it is from here to here. Now fortunately for 